budget impact analysis is an important form of economic assessment that estimates the financial consequences of using a new healthcare intervention. The results should enable decision makers to answer the question How much will this healthcare intervention cost? In simple terms, budget impact is measured by comparing the cost of treatment following the introduction of a new healthcare intervention with the current costs of treatment. It is critical that the intended audience, and their perspective, is always kept in mind. A decision maker is only interested in issues that affect their budget. As such, the aim of any analysis should be to calculate the local budget impact for the intended audience. All budget impact analyses are driven by three key elements. First, the number of patients eligible for treatment. Second, current and future management patterns or treatment mixes. And thirdly, the costs associated with treatment. We'll look at each of these elements in turn and consider the inputs required to calculate them. First, patient population. To establish the patient population for the duration of the analysis, we need to start with the local population as a whole. The pool of patients with a particular disease can then be calculated using incidence or prevalence data, the choice of which will be dictated by the disease and the role of the new intervention in its management. For example, for an acute treatment, such as that given following a heart attack, incidence data would be the most relevant to establish the patient pool in the local population. However, for a maintenance therapy in a chronic condition, for example, asthma, prevalence data would be more appropriate. It should be noted that annual incidence and prevalence rates may vary over the time frame of the analysis. Depending on the disease and treatment considered it may be necessary to also take patient demographics such as age, gender or ethnicity into account. For example, the incidence of lung cancer increases with age and is higher in men. Therefore, to accurately calculate the number of patients with lung cancer in a given population, the age demographics of the group would need to be considered as well as its male-to-female ratio. If the use of an intervention is limited to a particular patient subgroup, treatment criteria will also need to be applied to calculate the eligible patient population. For example, the use of a product is restricted to patients with tumors that are HER2 positive. The rate of HER2 positive tumors therefore needs to be applied to the number of breast cancer patients in the local population to calculate the number of eligible patients. Let us now consider how the treatment mix is modeled. A budget impact analysis will compare current management, the current treatment mix, with the way it is expected patients will be managed following the introduction of the new intervention, which is the new treatment mix. The current treatment mix can be established based on clinical guidelines or on current clinical practice, for example through market research. However, the new treatment mix will need to be estimated based on the expected position of the new intervention within the current treatment pathways and its anticipated uptake rate. For example, for a given disease, the majority of patients may currently receive intervention A, with smaller proportions receiving interventions B and C. The new treatment mix will depend on the positioning of the new intervention. For example, it might compete with all existing interventions, taking market share from each. Or, perhaps the new intervention will replace one of the existing, say intervention A, without competing with the others. It may be that the new intervention is an add-on therapy, in which case the new treatment mix would comprise the current treatment mix with the new intervention used. Additionally, by a certain proportion of patients. The uptake rate of the new intervention also needs to be taken into account when determining the new treatment mix. When a new drug becomes available, it is unlikely to be used by all eligible patients immediately. It is more realistic to model its use increasing year after year following introduction. Next, let's consider the costs associated with treatment. For any budget impact analysis, the minimum cost input required will be the intervention acquisition costs. However, other intervention-related costs may be included. The decision to include them should be based on their relevance to the audience and the intervention in question. For example, a pharmacy budget holder will only be interested in drug costs, or an additional cost such as labor time for administration may only apply to drugs given by infusion. Costs and savings associated with the clinical outcomes of an intervention may also be included in budget impact analyses. 
Again, their inclusion should be dictated by the intended audience and intervention. Once the cost inputs have been determined, the audience's local environment should be considered. For example, there may be local discounts or reimbursement structures in place, such as copayments, that need to be taken into account. Also, discounting may need to be applied if the analysis is run over more than one year. These three key elements will form the basis of all budget impact analyses. However, there are other factors that will require consideration, for example, the time frame over which the analysis should be run. The key factor that should determine the time horizon for an analysis is the time frame over which the intended audience plans their budget. National agencies often issue guidelines on time horizons for budget impact analyses. These vary from country to country, but typical recommendations are between three and five years. However, budget planning can vary considerably within countries themselves. It is therefore important to try to gain an understanding of the local situation when developing an analysis. The therapy area may also affect the time horizon. For example, in chronic conditions, the benefits of a new drug, such as events avoided, may only be seen several years after its introduction and within a short time frame, for example, two years, the complete budgetary consequences of the drug may not be realized. Therefore, the time horizon of an analysis would need to be extended to reflect the true impact of the drug. The final stage of a budget impact analysis is to perform a sensitivity analysis. This will allow you to identify the key cost drivers in the model and test the robustness of the assumptions that have been made. Let's now go through an example of a budget impact analysis step by step. The example calculates the budget impact of introducing a new intervention to prevent exacerbations in adult asthma patients. The analysis will be run over three years and takes into account drug acquisition costs, exacerbation management costs, and a 5% discounting rate. For a hypothetical stable local population, a prevalence rate of 10% is used to calculate the total number of asthma patients. The number of adult patients is then calculated to generate the patient population entering the model. Next, the treatment mix of both the current and new scenarios is modeled. In the current scenario, all patients receive intervention A in each year. In the new scenario, the percentage of patients treated with intervention B increases from 25% in year 1 to 75% in year 3, reflecting the uptake of this new intervention. Now let's consider the costs of each treatment scenario. First, drug acquisition costs. In our example, the annual cost of intervention B, 200 euros, is twice that of intervention A, 100 euros. The annual drug acquisition costs for each scenario are calculated by multiplying the number of patients receiving each intervention by its cost. The drug acquisition costs are then calculated for each of the three years taking into account the different treatment mixes and the 5% discounting rate for years 2 and 3. The results are then summed to give the total drug acquisition costs for each scenario. Next, let's consider the costs of exacerbations, taking into account the efficacy of each intervention and the costs associated with the management of exacerbations, 1,500 euros. The annual exacerbation management costs for each scenario are calculated by multiplying the number of patients experiencing exacerbations by the cost of managing an event. As with the drug acquisition costs, the exacerbation management costs for each scenario are calculated for each year, taking into account the treatment mixes and 5% discounting rate. The results for each scenario are summed to give the total exacerbation management costs. The drug acquisition and exacerbation management costs are added together to give the total cost of treatment for each scenario. The net budget impact of introducing the new treatments is then calculated by subtracting the cost of the old scenario from the new. In our example, the extra drug acquisition costs associated with the new intervention are offset by the reduced exacerbations management costs. This results in a negative net budget impact, or cost savings, over three years. This video covered the, what a budget impact analysis is, its key components, and an example analysis. We have discussed the considerations for selecting inputs and the importance of choosing values that are relevant to the intended audience and intervention.